Liam says, talking about support acts, quick one, Liz, would you rather only be a comedy tribute act for a whole year or you have to take one on tour with you as support for five years? I will take one on tour with me as support for five years and never watch a second of them because I am not resorting to being the lowest form of entertainment on the planet. Okay. Thanks for watching all <laughs> the tribute acts. <laughs> So last time we talked about last time we talked about this, a P, we were talking about the Peter K oh, tribute wow, acts, yeah. Keith, like whoever they call Keith Laird or something. Yeah, like, is he even the um, com- what I think he's like the big dog. I think yeah. there's guys. Well, that, Peter's not gigging, is he? So he's, he's... the dream of being Keith Laird. I'm like, yeah. Oh fucking hell, brand leader. Um, someone got in touch and was like, y- "If you want to come and see me, I'm in Warrington this night." In St. Helens that night, and I'm I'm drawn to it in a weird way. I know. And I don't mean. know if I could handle it's it. Weird, isn't it? Because you know, with when it comes to music, if we take our opinions to one side, I mean, I, I agree with you, but if we just <laughs> put the victory on oh, yeah, one it's side, grim, but it, yeah. I want to see just, it. If we move it to one side, <laughs> why do we accept it with music? I don't. But not comedy. I would but despise we, but, us at all. But as a society, okay, we enough. do. Oh, I, I don't. Right. Okay. But I don't. Oh, look. Right, well, don't watch Star Trek. I'm Robbie Saturday Williams. Night. Look at me tattoos. <laughs> Fuck off. Do not watch my new show, Starstruck, on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> you will fucking hate it. <laughs> I will not be watching that. No, it's not for you. It's not for you. Is there anything about musicals? Because then he's right back in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not Alexander Hamilton, the real one. In the musical. Yeah. No. Oh, you got it now, aren't you? No. You thought it was Alexander Hamilton, the fifth gay president of the United States of Canada. Or some, however it goes. If Alexander Hamilton had written his own autobiographical play and had written all the songs, maybe I'd hate the musical. Oh, yeah. But someone matching their haircuts to their favourite singer and then drawing fake tattoos on and going on stage to be like... It is weird, isn't it? So I've got some tribute acts in my family. Um, so my family. Oh, you've really fucked yeah. this up. It's his TV show. It's his Christmas day. I I have got very resolute opinions but on look, this. I, I'm fine with that. Mum's Barbra Streisand and Dad's Tom Jones. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but we have we genuinely have. We've got um, so my uncle. So they're all in musical uh, like music bands and, and and stuff growing up, show bands and stuff. And then when they went their separate ways, so I've got one uncle who's, who does uh, Michael Bublé every Friday night. Um, and I've got another uncle who he does him. Who does him? Yeah, he does him. Don't do and Saturdays. Got, and I've got don't do Saturdays. Rapper. I'll go the game. Well, he's actually a, he's actually a vicar, so he can't, he can't do Saturdays. <laughs> Fuck off! He, honestly, he can't do he can't do Saturdays. He's working Sunday morning, so he's got his own church. But he does Michael Bublé during the week. And then my other uncle, Brendan. He's uh, Neil Diamond uh, impersonator, Neil Diamante. I thought you were going to say a day of the week. Honestly, it's true. That's my uncle Brendan, yeah. So I've got a couple of them. My auntie does Kate Bush. So I've actually got, there's quite two or three uh, knocking about. There's no way that's true. Mate, honestly. Your uncle is a Michael Bublé tribute actor who's also a vicar. Uncle Dennis, yeah. (laughs) And the other one is Neil Diamante. Neil Neil Diamante, yeah. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite a rich family of tradition. You had no chance. <laughs> I mean, what, so when I said I want to work in show business, there was no surprise. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no one was like, if I'd have gone, I want to be an accountant, not under my roof. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's quite a big, um, it's quite a big deal actually. But I, I must say, what's weird about the tribute act world is they believe a lot of them believe it. Not my uncles necessarily, but a lot of them believe it. I did a gig years ago at the Embassy Club, Burnham Manning's place, a, a charity. Gig. This is a bit legendary. This one. Did you get asked to do it, or did you ask to do it? Because it's from like a different world, isn't it? It is a different world. No, I got asked to do it, and it was Bernard, me, and Elvis. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> yeah. Elvis. It wasn't the eldest, to be fair. I don't know yeah. if he's done Rochdale. But... I thought we had a breaking news story there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was only one dressing room, and Elvis wouldn't share. So he was like, no, he wanted it to himself because he had to get ready. He was like, you don't, need to, you know, you're a comic. You just turn up and do the, I've got to get ready. I've got, I've got to get into Elvis. I was like, okay, I, I'm fine with that. I don't need to watch that. And, um, and then so afterwards, um, afterwards, I think maybe I'd done a bit of 8 out of 10 cats or something. I don't know what had happened, but I'd definitely done a bit of telly or something, enough for someone to want a photo afterwards. And I was coming out, and these two women came, can we get a photo? And I went, yeah, fine, no problem. Did a little photo. And then Elvis come out, still as Elvis. He's not even used the fucking dressing room. And uh, he'd come out, and the girls went, oh, can we get a, can we get a picture? And he went... Uh, no pictures, no, thank you. I was like, mate, you're from fucking Rochdale. <laughs> Have a photo. He believed it so much that he was just like in the... He was a very good Elvis. <laughs> he literally had a what would Elvis do moment in the like, No, 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 no Elvis photos. Thank you very much. I'm leaving the building. No. 
Uh, it was, yeah. So yeah, they yeah. are that person when they're big? Just, not all of them, but yeah. They, there's, a, there's a few, like, pockets, I think, in show business of, like, the, the more you talk to them, the weirder they are. Like, comics, are, we're on a level. We're, there's obviously something going on here that we crave attention. I mean, it's not, it's obvious, isn't it, you know? Not so enough to put an Elvis costume Not on. enough for, to do that. Yeah. Then you've got those people who, 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 who I guess, have, have got a talent to mimic someone else. The weirdest people in show business, I think, are ventriloquists. All of them. Now, don't get me wrong. You, you've got your Paul Zerdins and your Nina Contes and that who are normal-ish. Yeah. But when you get into it and you're sat in a room with just a ventriloquist, it's fucking weird. <laughs> just a matter of time. They're weird. Honestly, they're weird, yeah. They're I think just, it's absolutely mental. I they don't can't know who they are. It. They yeah. don't know who they are. And they've, and they've got someone just talking all the time that is most... I interviewed Nina Conti the other week and I said it to her. I said, ventriloquists are weird, aren't they, like generally? <laughs> and she said, yeah, because your longest relationship you've ever had with anyone is a fucking puppet on the end yeah. of your hand. Yeah. It's... <laughs> you're getting, what, you're getting I, paid. I can't get past. So, I'm, look, I can suspend me belief with stand-up. And this yeah. is something I need to enjoy a proper stand-up is... Obviously, an intelligent person who watches a lot of stand-up knows that the comedian has gone on stage and is not saying it for the first time. Yeah, They've done yeah. it every night for a year or whatever. But you have to suspend your belief watching a stand-up comedian for a lot of the emotion in the routines yes. that it, it is spilling out of them, right? So that's why, for me personally, I don't love watching an hour of one-liners because mm. I can't believe it for that long. Yeah, I can't yeah, do it. Yeah, it's a lot. I cannot suspend my belief enough with a ventriloquist because when they're like, meh, 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 right? I'm like, yeah, but you're saying that. Like, and it's <laughs> like, <laughs> See, I disagree. that's I you. Think. You're saying, imagine if he said this. Yeah, but he hasn't because it's a puppet and you're saying that. But I think if you watch someone like Paul Zerden, who is so good at it, like I think, especially if you're in the audience, maybe different side of stage, but in the audience after five minutes, I think you're in. I've seen like crowds at Jonglers on a Thursday, you know, first Friday, Saturday night in the middle of Leicester, who it's been a bear pit all night, and then he brings out a fucking baby, and they're going, fucking, you know, this is comedy. <laughs> you know, so, you're know following I mean? Paul? Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I'd say the the best story I've ever heard about ventriloquist. So. This is back in the day. This is like in the seventies. Roy Walker told us this. Well, we were talking about mad sort of moments that have happened in dressing rooms. Do you, this might be before your time. I mean, not yours, Dan. Um, but uh, the, the other same age as Jason. Just because we're same age. All I'm saying. I'm just saying because we're the same age. Yeah, yeah. Because we're mates. Yeah, yeah. It was back in the day. There was uh, there was an act called uh, Ray Allen with Lord Charles, and he had a. It was like a monocled like puppet with a top hat. And it was, you know, that was his little thing, right? So Roy, Roy says so that they were doing this gig in Blackpool and he's turned up, uh, Ray Allen. He's got a massive trunk and he goes into the room and uh, in the dressing room, they're all just sat around in the dressing room having a fag or whatever, just chilling out before the gig. Oh, there you go. There he is, exactly there. And, oh, I've, uh, I've, I've, I remember. Terrifying. Yeah, I'd, absolutely Jace, terrifying. do you remember him? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, remember this. Yeah, yeah, you will do, yeah. So this is, that's Ray Allen and, and Lord Charles, right? So he turns up, he comes in the room and he hangs Lord Charles up on a little hook <laughs> and he puts his trunk there and he goes, he says, I'm just going to get myself sorted, have a shower or whatever, you know. He said, um, as he's leaving, he goes, oh, boys. And there's like four or five of them in there. He goes, don't look in the trunk. And then leaves the room. Oh. <laughs> now, that's weird anyway. You're sat, and so they're all sat there all of a sudden. They weren't going to look in the trunk. But now he said, don't look in the trunk. They're like, I'm going to look in the trunk. <laughs> so one of them goes over, maybe Roy, one of the others, opens the trunk. There's hardly anything in this trunk. There's a couple of spare parts of Lord Charles, maybe, you know, a spare suit, some toiletries or whatever. Weird. And he closes the trunk, puts it back in its place, sits back down. Ray Allen comes back in five minutes later, looks up at Lord Charles on the hook, and, look, and Lord Charles goes, they looked in the trunk. <laughs> and he fucking throws the voice to the puppet. They looked in the trunk. How oh fucking God. weird is that? Oh my God, that's horrible. The, the puppet didn't really say it. You oh look like he's like, <laughs> like he's looking Annabelle. Like, but how did he looks, make the string? I, I, I don't know if the the thing moved, but the voice was enough. Right, okay. To go he wasn't look. moving. And also mouth. the fact that he knew something that had happened when he wasn't in the room. Fucking weird. That's got, that that guy's got a bit. He knows every time yeah, he, yeah. he goes for a piss. So, yeah. He's just gone for a little walk around the corridors. Yeah, totally. Like, this is my bit. They're, they're the best. Have you ever sat with one of the old boys and just listened to some of those stories from the back in the day? 
They're incredible. You need to get somebody, you know, Mick Miller or someone like that on, on We'd here. We'd love to get Mick on, actually. Honestly, the stories, they're on another level. We've got stories of heckles and stuff I'm like that. I'm doing a gig but... with him next week, and you, actually, for the, the Ukraine benefit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll we should him. probably plug that, actually. On the 18th of April, there's a, a benefit gig for the Ukrainian war effort. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're funding them. Yeah, at the Manchester <laughs> Apollo. Maybe no, not, no. not so we, flippant. Uh, the Ukraine need bombs. <laughs> we are raising money with comedy for bombs to was back Just over to Russia. Just the morning, I was me and said, will you do a charity gig for me? It's something to do with Ukraine. I and think I it's more for yeah. the refugees. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's to arm the refugees <laughs> with nukes. <laughs> yeah. We're giving every Ukrainian refugee a nuke and sending them back. Yeah. And the one gig at the Manchester Apollo is going to fund the entire so thing. So good. Yeah. You love charity, don't you? I do. Loves Les it. Dennis is on. <laughs> Les Dennis is pro nukes. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Walker is obviously Roy Walker's son is yes. someone we've all gigged with loads he I've been mates with him for a while lived in St Anne's for a little bit and we used to have a coffee and I am such a I love asking about the old days oh, that's great so Phil was the son of a legend you just mentioned Roy Walker yeah, yeah. Roy Walker host from, of catchphrase yeah. if anyone yeah. say what you see yeah say what you see absolute legend just lived round the corner for the whole of their childhood from Les Dawson who's one of oh, my favourite yeah. old comics. You were talking about yeah. the legends who you used to grow up when I was a little kid. Les Dawson held in such high esteem. There was so an old funny. shepherd from Greece who did terrible thing to his geese, but he went too far with the budgery guard and the parrot rang the police. <laughs> Just amazing. <laughs> Just so I remember that. Just <laughs> Watching him play the piano wrong. So and Phil was like, yeah, I've got some weird memories from, obviously, my dad's mates were all TV legends. Yeah, I was like... What do you remember? He was like, yeah, one day, middle of summer, a Rolls Royce pulled up outside. And it was Les Dawson in Speedos, <laughs> oiled up in flip-flops, <laughs> cigar. He'd been sunbathing and he decided he needed to tell Roy something. So drove round <laughs> St. Anne's, oiled up, like, like Ray Winston in that in the film, you know, like absolutely yeah. shining. Came in, he went, is your dad in? <laughs> He was like, no, he's not. He's like, right, I'll wait for him. Came in the living room and sort of like spun it on the spot and went, oh, I've oiled up. I've oiled up. No, your mum will be fuming if I sit down. <laughs> Go and get me some towels. Go and get me some towels. I'll wait for your dad. Made Phil Walker run upstairs, get some towels out. He went, lay them on the floor, lay them on the floor. He laid towels out. Les Dawson lay on the towels so he didn't get oil on the couch and started just telling jokes to, to a child, Roy Walker. Roy's like, I've got a very strong memory of just sitting on the couch, pissing myself laughing at a shiny Les Dawson smoking a cigar, doing his set. Brilliant. Mwah, yeah, loved they're it. great. They're, the, the, I mean, obviously, there's the big boys as well. When I first started, um, before actually, before I started standing, I was about 15, and I had this girlfriend whose uncle was a comic on the old circuit, Dave Barron. And he'd play like in the clubs, and in, in, and I was interested in it. I was I was always asking him questions, and he said, "Oh, do you want to come to a gig?" And you know, we're going to Blackpool, so I just used to hold his shirt, and sort of so I could get in, you know, with him and and sit with him, and uh, and then you'd be in these dressing rooms, everybody fagging away and just like chatting. It. And the best story I ever heard was it was at this club, the number one club in 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 Blackpool, and there was an old comic on, like in his sort of fifties, sixties. Um, and he'd been, you know, he'd, do, he'd doing forty minutes. And I don't know if you know this, but like, there's a, and even now to a certain extent, there's there's a point with some club owners where you have to do your time, like twenty minutes, thirty minutes, forty minutes. The time, irrespective of whether it's funny or it's going well, that's not because that's just people's opinions. Time is not an opinion. So this there's an old story from Alexander's because Alexander's used to be like that. You yeah. do your forty minutes. Yeah, yeah. And there's a story I won't name him in case it doesn't want to be named. There's a Manchester comic who did thirty eight and come off. And the woman who used to run it was like, you're not getting paid, you haven't done your time. And he went, he shouted at the audience, went, just stay where you are. Uh, I need to do another two minutes. He went back on, started his watch, said an not another word, stood there for 120 <laughs> seconds, and I went, good night, I went, got his money, wow. never played it again. It's not That's usually ridiculous. the good clubs that have these rules. Yes, they don't, people can judge it. But this club had this rule, so this guy's doing 40 minutes, and he's not just dying on his arse, no one's heckling, we can deal with that, heckling and being, people are not listening, and they're just chatting quite quite loudly and chatting away and just doing their own thing and no one's listening. And he gets to the end. It's one of those clubs in the day where you weren't allowed to swear or do anything sexual and things, so you just have to do, you know. So he gets to the end of his act and he says, thank you, good, good night, and he leaves, like, despondent, as you can imagine. And the noise and the rabble behind him of people just talking has not changed. And as he's walking off to the dressing room, the bingo trolley is coming the other way and it gets wheeled up onto the stage. And as it does... 
a hush falls across the audience and something just twigs in his head where he, he's like, I fucking live it. And he runs back out onto stage and he's giving it, you set of fucking swans, you cunts, every single one of you. I've been doing this job for 40 years, man and boy. You disrespected me. I've done 40 minutes, my best stuff. You didn't even fucking listen. The bingo trolley comes on and you're quiet for that, you fucking ignorant. And he's giving it, and the club secretary's running across, the, trying to stop me. And he goes, he's like, Dave, Dave. We were just having a minute silence for somebody who uh, who died last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell, I love that moment. <laughs> just on stage like that. Mm. <laughs> See you next week. I love it. Love it. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. 